is the shop and what happens in a shop. Um, and so what I sort of wanted to pose to our panelists and, and to our audience too is the women in the shop also is uh, community building and a little bit of community organizing because sometimes it does become political and the work that does come out of it becomes political and the conversations and the time that's spent within a shop these dialogues become a part of our artistic practices and then they also become cultural cornerstones of production and collections and the way people think about prints and their significance and how um, printmaking is used. So I was hoping that um, you could comment a little bit about you know, the ideas and thoughts about the shop. And... I'd just say two quick things. Um, I was thinking about when um, Jennifer mentioned the idea of the print as kind of a, like a political tool. There's a couple of interesting things. Um, in 1948, the US government established a, an office in Puerto Rico um, that was known as the Division of Education and Community. And they funded filmmaking and printmaking as educational tools for the larger community. And a lot of these referred to things like wash your hands after using the bathroom or you know, how to tell if you have a fever or something. Um, and every time I go to City College on Mondays to teach in the bathroom, there's these little posters that say, are you worried about swine flu? And I was thinking how, you know, if it were 1950 in Puerto Rico, someone would be making a print that looked fabulous that said, are you worried about whatever, you know, how to take care of it. So this, um, the print became a really important tool in that way to educate larger communities and to East Harlem and the Puerto Rican print shop. So this idea of working collaboratively and people who are the, the environment of the workshop is an important place to meet and connect with other people. And that's where someone like Nita Tupinia comes out of. At the same time that the um, post-civil rights movements are gaining ground among the Latin communities, both in New York, in the East Coast and West Coast, um, this idea of the neo Taino movement became really important. And this was a looking back to one's indigenous roots. The Taino are the free Hispanic people of the Caribbean, and so for um, Puerto Ricans working in the 70s and 80s, just working inside the print shop environment, making prints together, led to this renaissance of the interest in pre Hispanic culture and design and aesthetics as, a, as um, inspiration. And so she did a whole series of prints that focus on what they call the neo Taino um, imagery. And I think part of it is this collaborative working group where there are these political ideas that are um, that bring people together, and then the creation of prints that, in some cases, don't even they're used as posters. So sometimes the artist's name isn't even on it, but they're used to spread word about um, uh, demonstrations or meetings that are going to happen about, for example, political independence. Uh, I was thinking about this, uh, I was thinking about um, the book that you did, the, the collaboration you did with this poet. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that? Right. So, uh, about the, well, you know what I was thinking, just what you were talking about, about the print. I'm in a vortex here of this thing. <laughs> um, but about the print and how it, it has a record, like how it's used is a record of how that society is. And um, even Carl, when he did his rock posters, he's got 13 years of rock posters. All the, the landscape of Williamsburg, where his shop was, is pretty much it's changed so much, and everything changes. And you don't know who y'all go. You're in a generation. You don't know who's gonna do what. And everybody has this. I just love that there's a record in this capsule and this image, just like record covers or anything else. It's so meaningful after a while, but it doesn't necessarily cost a lot. It's ten dollars at a show, and it's so nice to have that as a record. Of and then what we were talking about about a book. When we do collaborative books, like collaborative with a poet who I was in the Provincetown Fine Arts Work Center with, and he opened me up to books I didn't know at all. He would just come. It was seven months and they give you money in the workshop to make the paintings or your artwork, and the writers, there would be 10 writers and 10 artists, and he would just lay these you know, books at my door, and I, I had no idea of some of this. You know. And my dinner with Andre was the first time I saw that movie, and you just are open up to a world that maybe your undergraduate couldn't give you these collaborations. So 
we did make a book together and um, of uh, excerpts from his novel, and that is quite lovely. You know, it reaches different people. So there's a book community and a print community, and then there's the rock community. But I love when they're created in one show because it gets so linear in galleries and places to have to focus in on the market more. And then when it, you know, when it's not that expensive, it can be so meaningful later. You can collect these things. You never know. You never know what it's going to be or what it's going to mean.
Uh, there was a whole group of over 50 publishers who were too small to travel to, I don't know, Miami, too small to have a big booth at the IFPDA fair. Uh, but significant enough, the great, great artwork that they were making out of here that needed to be shown. Most of these spaces don't have any gallery spaces. Many of them are not in New York City, so they're hard for people to go visit. Uh, so the fair really was filling a huge, big, important void for many, many years, and suddenly it wasn't there. Um, and, you know, we, we talked, I thought about it a lot on my own, talked to myself <laughs> for a long time before I actually spoke to Susan, and, and you know, uh, we figured out that we would actually be probably an ideal entity to do it because we are an independent shop, we don't have a huge, big administration that we would have to report, and, and ask for permission other than our board. Um, we are large enough having a few staff members to actually work on it as opposed to having a shop like Judith where, where you know there's a printer and that's it, that's the shop. Uh, we have computers so we can have a database and a mailing list and so it suddenly it became clear that we are ideal. Even though like six months before I was saying, oh I don't need another job. But <laughs> I got it anyways. Uh, and it does make certain sense for a shop that's been a community shop to step up and also work with a broader community of not only individual artists but its own colleagues and again promote printmaking at a new level that we could not have been able to do before. So it just all kind of clicked um, in a beautiful way. And of course it's everything, you know, in shops, one of the beauty of any print shop uh, is 